Yes, um, just to echo what the earlier speaker said, the nation is very expectant insofar as Friday's State of the Nation address is concerned. You are all aware, countrymen and women, that Zambia as a country is on its knees. The State of the Nation, as we speak today, is a very, very uh, sorry state of affairs. The country is on its knees. When you talk about the energy sector, you talk about the food security, you talk about um, the energy sector, you talk about infrastructure, there is no single sector today that is thriving. And therefore, as a people, the Zambian people are very expectant that the president will come to parliament this time to foster hope in the minds of the Zambian people. The last three addresses, the last three addresses that he made to the House were mere speeches that did not translate to any policy shift. There's been no product from the other speeches that the president has delivered. So we expect that the president this time around will foster hope in the minds of the Zambian people. In the alternative, the president can come out clearly and sincerely to the Zambian people and render an apology that he has now discovered that running a country is a much more serious undertaking than he thought. The president can come clean before the Zambian people to say if he knew then what he knows now, maybe his position as regards running this country would have been different. The Zambian people are ready to give him a chance, lend him an ear, and we have a fresh start. I'll be very clear, like uh, my lady sister said, we are in a food crisis today, not because of the drought. We acknowledge, yes, that we have a, a drought due to climatic uh, uh, conditions, but we're in a food crisis today because the UPND government exported all the maize irresponsibly. They came on the floor of the house, they went all over the radio stations to deceive Zambians that they sold the maize in order to pay farmers. The former Minister of Agriculture came on the floor of the house and challenged the current Minister of Agriculture to say when he was leaving the office as minister, he did not leave a single farmer unpaid. There was no farmer who had supplied maize during 2021 and was not paid as at the time the PF was leaving government. The Minister of Agriculture, Honorable uh, Michael Katambo, stated clearly that what he left was one over 1.5 million tons of maize. So we are in this position today, not because of the drought, but because we decided to sell maize. That is true because if you look at how government is responding as a stopgap measure, uh, they are importing about 650,000 metric tons, meaning without selling the 1.5 million tons, we would have been food secure. <clears throat> I should also make it very clear that uh, yes, we have a crisis because the water levels in our dam are low. But the extended load shedding is not as a result of that factor alone, but because the UPND government ignored our advice and decided to export electricity. So as the president comes to the house, our expectations are that he will firstly come and declare the energy crisis a national disaster on the floor of the house. That is the state of affairs. To give you statistics, if you look at three hours of power per day and you multiply that by 30 days, it will give you about 90 hours of power per month. So we are literally only receiving three days of power out of 30 days. What sort of a country would that be? What kind of country is that? What are governments there for? What are governments there for? If a government can't step in 
to save the small businesses, the small businesses operating in the corporates, not only in the markets, but some of them are actually operating from home. Lives are being lost today because of load shedding. Banks are not operating. Those that attempted to go to Manda Hill today, all the banks were closed this morning. Why? Because there's no power. What kind of government will it be? First of all, this government exported power and irresponsible acts. It should be the same government to step forward and import power to save businesses. So, a President Akainde Hichilema, as you come to Parliament, we want you to declare this energy crisis as a national disaster. <coughs> President, we also want you to come to Parliament and inform us that as government you have decided to import power to save lives in hospitals and also save small uh, scale businesses and also be able to help students and pupils that are in various institutions as the situation stands. When you talk about policies in the agricultural sector, you actually say the president, when your government came into power, you introduced what you called CASIP, the Comprehensive Agriculture Support Program. It's a program that us as members of parliament have struggled to understand because even the minister responsible for agriculture does not understand what CASIP is. How do we expect what? our poor farmers? <laughs> The Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Montolo Piri, does not know what CASIP is. I know this because we have asked him. We have asked him questions. Can you explain exactly what the salient features of this new program are? He does not know. And yet the farmers have been told that we are going to increase production because we are introducing CASIP. Mr. President, we can't play or toy around with the agriculture sector. This time, as you come to Parliament, we expect you to come and make uh, serious statements, giving us uh, new policies in the agricultural sector. To help you, sir, as a proposal, one of the easiest things that you must do, go back to FISIP. FISIP, as you found it in 2021, was producing up to 3.6 million tons of maize. We had moved from 2.8 during the MMD time, increasing year by year, to a time that um, we're leaving power as Patriotic Front, we had gone up to 3.6. When you introduced CASIP, Mr. President, production in its first year dropped to 2.6 million tons. We had lost production by 25%. The following year, it went down to 1.5 million tons. And this particular year, it would, we are expecting, the previous year we are expecting 1.5 million tons. So firstly, as an alternative policy, Mr. President, go back to FISIP as it was in its original form under the Patriotic Front Party. Secondly, Mr. President, as you come to Parliament, come and inform the nation that as a stopgap measure, you have decided to allocate more farming inputs to areas which are not prone to drought, areas in Luapula, areas in northern province, Muchinga province and eastern provinces. That way, we can easily double or quadruple production without much do. Yes, we have information that um, there are various interventions, including, including the investments in, the, in, the, in irrigation. We have no problem with that. But looking at the rainy season, which is a month away, all you needed to do is to get statistics, names of farmers in every district, in areas which are not prone to drought, and just increase the location of farming inputs. Your production will certainly double. So we expect that um, as you come to parliament, you're going to uh, give us policies in the agricultural sector that will change the productivity and production in that sector. There's been a lot of problems in the mining sector, and I think uh, uh, Comrade Sanga uh, talked about it. I will zero in on small-scale mining. There are a number of um, mineral deposits that have been discovered in various areas. So what we have today is uh, the youths go out of their way, they use their um, skill and intellectual property to discover minerals. And what government does is to invite Big Brother. The government is inviting friends. 
to come and kick out those youths from those areas, begin to arrest them, uh, use force to move these, these youths from those areas. Uh, Mr. President, as a way of helping